Over the past 15 years, Australia has given the Solomon Islands aid worth more than $3 billion. It's a far greater amount than any other country has donated. Without doubt, the help is much needed, but whether it's appreciated or not is another matter. It seems the Solomons government is much more grateful for the far less aid it receives from China. Tonight, Eric Bagshaw, the North Asia correspondent for the Sydney Morning Herald and The Age, reports on the very determined battle between East and West to win hearts and minds in this strategically important Pacific nation. With its clear blue sea and rolling green hills, it's easy to understand why Solomon Islanders call their home the Happy Isles. Australia is trying to make it even happier by spending more money here than any other country. But looking around, you'd never know. It's China that's making the biggest mark, with flashy investments all over the place. And they're on a deliberate campaign to let everyone know. I have been accused several times that I was the China boy. <laughs> I, I was carrying the thoughts for them. As an editor at the Solomon Star, Alfred Sasako is meant to be an independent journalist. And he assures us he is, even though the paper only survives because of Chinese money. We have a lot of us, uh, needs here. So we, we, we approached China. I said, what can, you, what can you do? Can you help us? They did uh, help with uh, the uh, printing machine. There were some computers, yeah, uh, some cameras. How can you report independently on China if they are funding the printing of your newspapers? It's a thin line, yeah, very thin line. Because every donor wants some form of acknowledgement for what they do. If Australia has some funding for us, we'll be more than willing to, to fund it. But I, I don't have any, any concern uh, personally. Uh, others might, I, I don't. For decades, the Chinese government had virtually no presence here in the Solomon Islands because of the country's diplomatic ties to Taiwan. But that all changed in 2019 when Prime Minister Manese Sogavari switched his allegiance to Beijing, opening the door to Chinese money that has been pouring in ever since. The most eye-catching of all China's projects in the capital, Honiara, is the brand new stadium. It towers over the rest of the city. The $120 million complex was built by Beijing, so the Solomons could host the Pacific Games. It's like the Olympics for Australia's closest neighbours. I firmly believe that without China coming in as a partner in development, I don't think we would have been able to host the game. Do you think that by not providing the infrastructure that China has provided, mm. that Australia left the door open to China establishing more of a foothold here I, in the Solomon Islands. I believe so. I believe so. I am basically saying, Australia, why is it taking so long to realise that there is a potential vacuum here that someone could take advantage of? The Games are the biggest event in the nation's history. And it's also the first time many foreign journalists have been allowed back into the country since the Solomons signed an unprecedented security deal with China last year. So there's a lot of anxiety, confusion about what is this thing, what will be its burden to the country. Celsus Talifulu was an advisor to Prime Minister Sogavare, but he quit after the leader chose to side with China. His outrage only intensified when he was leaked a draft copy of the PM's security pact with Beijing. So he posted it online for the world to see. And it revealed just how much influence China would have here. Unlike agreements with other countries, 
The deal allows the Chinese Communist Party to send in police to protect their investments. And Celsus fears there are other strings attached. You read a document like that that says Solomon Islands is ceding some of its security. How does that make you feel? Well, I was really shocked that this is happening to us. And it, this is a deal that could affect my children. We have arrangements with Australia. They've always been here. Why do this thing? Something that will only create problems, not solve problems. I don't believe that the secure, so-called security deal is different from what Solomon Island has also signed with Australia, with Papua New Guinea, with Fiji. I guess one difference might be that Australia and others have democratically elected governments. Yeah, China says that uh, their democracy is with uh, Chinese characteristics. But Xi Jinping is president for life. How is that democratic? Well, that's, that's a choice that people make. What attracts Beijing to this patch of paradise is not its beauty, but its location. If war ever broke out in the Pacific, having control over the Solomon Islands would be a huge advantage. The country sits right in the middle of a shipping route between China, the United States, and Australia. It's about getting rid of uh, Taiwan's uh, influence in the world. It's about trade. It's about access to the seas. It's about the movement of military. And if uh, our leaders are not careful, we might end up losing our sovereignty of our, of our land, of our resources. That's dangerous and that's very concerning. Is that what's happening here, that Solomon Islands sovereignty is for sale to the highest bidder? I believe so. They are coming and they will be coming in bigger ways and ways that we will not be able to contain them. If you ask Joel Jackson, it's already happening. Good to see you. And he's got the vision that proves his point. In his village, a company with links to the Chinese government has moved in and built a gold mine. Uh, that is the open pit. They promised to pay landowners and help develop the area. They promised to make a recreation area in this area. But, but five years later, Joel says the deal was a sham. Promised us to be, help the community by building a community hall. Promised to help school, build classrooms, clinic as well. All these things are failed promises. Worst of all, the compensation is insulting. Joel says he's been paid less than 10 Australian dollars. A very low royalty payments, very low. Uh, not enough for anything to buy. The company believes that there's more than 590 million Australian dollars worth of gold in that mine. No one told us about this one. How does that make the community feel? They feel so bad, so angry, but they can't say anything. Who can help them? No one can help them. Joel's tried to have it out with the company, win-win, but he says they threatened him. And because I spearhead the group, they have to stop me somewhere, no talk, shut them out. I don't know what will happen next. They treat us like animals. We are not human beings. They regard us like, like nothing. They don't have no care attitude to us. The Chinese state-linked company, Win Win, doesn't seem to care about local laws either. They were caught smuggling almost two kilograms of gold out of the country and, alarmingly, were fined only 360 Australian dollars. I've reported a lot of things to the, to the government, but the government did not take action. Since then, they've had their mining licence extended and are now mining another mine. That is not fair, really unfair to, the, to my people. But as you'll see, it's not just villagers like Joel who are worried about China's grip. The world's most powerful military is also paying close attention. The security of America, quite frankly, and the world depends on your security and the security of the Pacific Islands. The United States has sent 800 sailors to Honiara on an important mission. 
everything we can do to help contribute to a free, open, and stable Indo-Pacific region is, we think, in everyone's interest. The waterways are nothing short of spectacular here in the Solomon Islands. But one boat is much bigger than all the rest. A giant hospital ship from America. Local health services clearly need the help. But for the US, this mission means much more than that. It's a way for Washington to show it cares about what's happening in this part of the world. Why are you here, specifically in the Solomon Islands at this time? We're here because the Solomon Islands government invited us to come and we're assisting their medical infrastructure. But it's about projecting American power in its own way, isn't it? It's not about projecting power. It's about projecting cooperation. Everything we can do to help contribute to a free, open and stable Indo-Pacific region is, we think, in everyone's interest. Mission Commander Captain Brian Quinn is in charge of the Pacific Partnership for the US Navy. The four-month deployment is a clever PR exercise at a time when China's presence is stronger than ever. I am a thousand-bed hospital. I am the eighth largest hospital in the United States if I were on land. The hospital is run by Commanding Officer Captain Jeffrey Feinberg. With 12 operating theatres, four intensive care units and mobile X-ray machines, most Solomon Islanders have never seen anything like it. We've operated on some small children who you knew weren't going to survive if we did nothing. And, um, and the fact that we gave those children an opportunity for life is fantastic. But America isn't the only country bringing this type of care to the Pacific. China is also pushing hard for influence. In August, Chinese state TV was proud to report the arrival of its own hospital ship, the Ark of Peace in Honiara. But strangely, they didn't want to talk to us. So it's a free kick for America in the publicity war. Do you see it as a form of humanitarian competition between yourselves and the People's Liberation Army? This is the 19th iteration of Pacific Partnership. We do this every year. So it's not in response to this or that, especially not in response to anything recent. We're able to provide this medical support uh, and grow these connections that we hope will become enduring bonds of friendship, uh, not just between nations, but between individuals. The fight for power in the Pacific isn't just happening in the Solomon Islands. 2,000 kilometres away, the Federated States of Micronesia are also in China's sights. David Panuelo was the president there until May. He saw firsthand the sneaky tactics used by Beijing to try to gain the upper hand. When they invite our nation to uh, sign a certain agreement, you know, these types of agreements are uh, uh, carved out already by them. And if you don't see the fine line in, in what you are trying to uh, get into, uh, it can. Uh, sort of trap your nation. Panuelo says he resisted many Chinese proposals and they weren't happy about it, trying to get his government ministers to sign documents behind his back. It was straight out bullying that Panuelo desperately tried to reject. I said no to an ambassador of uh, China uh, did their best in wolf diplomacy, very consistent and patient and forceful to coerce uh, our, you know, uh, cabinet, uh, Secretary of Foreign Affairs, to sign it, even though a head of state uh, said no to it. Why were you so concerned about that deal? Because if we sign that deal, it's going to uh, uh, encroach on our sovereignty. It's going to allow China to come into our exclusive economic zone and basically do what they want. But Panuelo says Beijing wouldn't take no for an answer. They sent agents to follow him outside his home, and when that didn't work, they offered his vice president an envelope full of cash. One of many bribes and advances, he says his ministers knocked back. You know, they call it kifs, but it, it does and can influence uh, uh, decision-making of uh, people who are representing their, their nation and their citizens. And how does that make you feel? 
It doesn't make me feel good. Uh, we must be very cautious. You know, the whole Pacific uh, uh, must be cautious. Back in the Solomon Islands, the Prime Minister's former advisor, Celsus Talifilu, believes his old boss is not being cautious enough, especially about how millions of dollars in Chinese donations are being spent. And this is really sad that only will spoil the country, will make the, the systems of the country worst off. This is the man who's given Chinese investment the green light. Prime Minister Manesse Sogavare. An election was due this year, but Sogavare delayed it until 2024, holding on to power so he could host the Pacific Games, an event largely bankrolled by China. There's nothing stopping him at the moment. There's nothing. We found Sogavare returning from the USNS Mercy, the American hospital ship he's called in because his government's health services can't cope with local patients, let alone visitors for the Pacific Games. But his relationship with Beijing is clearly a touchy subject because Sogavare is quick to get away. Prime Minister Sogavare, what's your legacy from these games? What's your legacy from these games? Oh, we're living, we're living for another Tell me, program. What's Sorry. China's legacy? I mean, they're spending a lot of money here. What does China want in return? What does China want in return, Mr. Sogavare? Celsus believes there's no way to limit China's hold on the Solomons without Australia's help. But when Prime Minister Anthony Albanese was in Beijing last month, he was reluctant to get involved. China is building the stadium in Honiara for the Solomon Islands for the Pacific Games. It's also sending in a police force for security. How concerned are you about China's intentions in the region? Well, we will continue to have uh, those discussions about the region, but the Pacific family and is also made up of sovereign states. So we respect uh, the fact that sovereign states have a right to make uh, their decisions. I think Australia should care being the bigger brother in, in the Pacific, Australia has that duty to ensure the Pacific is a better place. We are connected by the sea. And what does that connection mean to you? It means that we are people from the same place, someone else with a different set of values, is entering our space. They are not part of our journey. They will never be. Hello, I'm Amelia Adams. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for our brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.